Hi, I'm Two Clicks Philip. You might be wondering how I got here. Me too. Our old graphics cards are starting to fail us. New graphics cards are unavailable, out of stock, because they're being bought up by all those damn crypto miners, using them to save the world or whatever. What us gamers need is a hero. A graphics card hero. It just needs to be cheap, available, and just about powerful enough to be able to run today's titles. And several of these might be on their way. AMD are releasing the Radeon 6500 XT for $200 and Nvidia is gearing up for the GeForce 3050, priced at $250. Both are designed for 1080p gaming with compromises, and they will be the slowest ray tracing capable desktop graphics cards the companies have ever, and may ever, release. But given that there isn't anything available at these price points right now, it's still a step in the right direction. And even if they are price scalped, they'll still have to be priced lower than existing cards are, because they're slower. So there's that. I'll start with the GeForce 3050, which is the simpler of the two cards to explain. For performance, Nvidia showed us two slides, both comparing it with the previous 50 series of cards, to which it compares favourably, as you'd hope for from a newer card. Compared with the older ones, and ones which you might be upgrading from, it looks to be about double the speed of the GeForce 1650, quite a bit faster than the 1060, and slightly faster than the 1660 Super. But let's be honest, we want to see how it stacks up against existing RTX cards. So I took a look at the specs, and the 3050 is essentially two-thirds of the GeForce 3060, give or take a bit. Look at the speed of this card, lop off about this much, and that's probably what the 3050 will be like. And that makes it easily the slowest desktop RTX card yet. It doesn't even match the previous title holder, the GeForce 2060 6GB, but the 3050 does at least come with a more generous 8GB of VRAM. So I'd describe the GeForce 3050 as being kind of like a beefed up version of the 1600 series of card, and with RTX support. So this does mean that it will support ray traced games, but the performance will be pretty terrible. But that's where DLSS comes in. As far as intelligent upscaling goes, DLSS is about as good as it gets. Which is just as well, because it looks like this card will rely heavily on DLSS to achieve much beyond 60fps in normal games, and in order to make ray tracing run acceptably at all. Really, this is the first graphics card I've seen where DLSS is needed in order to achieve what the card intends to do. Without it, I would call this a compromised 1080p experience. But thanks to DLSS, no current game or setting should be beyond this card's ability to run at close to maxed out settings. Of course, not all new games support DLSS, but I do think Nvidia does a rather good job of integrating it into the most demanding new titles out there, and for the rest they now have Nvidia image scaling to fall back on instead. So this card always has something that you can use to upscale your games with. Now onto the 6500 XT, which is priced $50 less at $199, which makes this card special. This could possibly be the $200 graphics hero that I wanted a year ago. On paper, it ticks all the boxes. It's less than $200, it supports ray tracing and upscaling. But all these things come with a compromise, especially when compared with the GeForce 3050. For a start, this card only has 4GB of VRAM, which is cruel. Even back in 2016, $200 cards came with a choice between 4 and 8GB. There were questions even back then about how future-proof 4GB of VRAM would be. So these days, it's already limiting, and will mean dropping the settings and resolution in quite a number of modern titles. The second compromise is with the ray tracing. AMD cards are not as fast at ray tracing as their Nvidia rivals are. And given that the 6500 XT is already slower than any GeForce RTX card is, I think we can expect the 6500 XT's ray tracing ability to be very limited indeed. The third compromise is that it doesn't seem to have any video encoding support. Now it should be obvious what this means, but if I'm honest, I don't know what it means because this is unexplored territory for me. Every graphics card in recent memory has had video encoding, even the budget ones. So it's a really odd thing for this card not to have, especially when they're still trying to charge $200 for it. So I guess what it means is that the 6500 XT won't be able to screen capture stuff, like you do with something like Shadowplay or Relive, which kills my interest in it as a YouTuber. It seems like a very strange feature to cut from a card like this. And the last compromise is to the upscaling. I've already mentioned DLSS and how great it is, and AMD doesn't have an upscaling solution that's anywhere near as good as that. The 6500 XT will rely on AMD's FSR. I've tested it myself and it is better than nothing. It will let you squeeze a bit more performance out of the card than if you were running at native resolution, but the benefits will be nowhere near as great as with DLSS enabled. And in my opinion, FSR really requires higher resolution than 1080p to shine. But the good news is that AMD are rolling out better support for it, so this upscaling should at least work in every game out there, 
unlike DLSS, which only works in supported titles. So what this all means for the 6500 XT is that it will be a 1080p card with serious compromises and with questions about future longevity. Now over on AMD's site they do provide some frame rates, which apparently shows anywhere between 60 and 120 FPS at 1080p high settings. Up to. What does up to even mean? It's such a vague metric that I think I'd rather just use the slides that they showed in the presentation. These didn't show the frame rates, but did at least provide comparisons with the GeForce 1650 and 5 year old Radeon 570. These graphs do appear to be accurately represented, so I was able to pikey some data from them. On average, from the games shown, the 6500 XT will be 36% faster than the GeForce 1650, and 23% faster than the Radeon 570. But while AMD is happy to compare their latest graphics cards with ones from 2017, I don't think it cuts it anymore. And I think it's frankly embarrassing that we haven't moved on at all since then. But we will have to wait until release day before we get blown away by discovering just how underwhelming the performance uplift will be, and how many times over the MSRP this card will be sold for. So expect the 6500 XT to be like the 5500 XT, with ray tracing, but with no video encoding support, and limited to just 4GB of VRAM. So it doesn't look very good for the 6500 XT. But there is one positive that I can see. AMD are using a new chip. It's not a cut down version of a bigger graphics card. I think the 6500 XT simply uses a card that was designed for mobile gaming. So this means that it will be very small and potentially very power efficient. It might not even require extra power cables to run, meaning that it will be a neat little card that you can just slot into any existing PC, no problem at all. But that is the only positive that I can see. So, the GeForce 3050 for $250, and the 6500 XT for $200 and delivering about two thirds of the performance, but with even worse ray tracing and upscaling support, and only half the VRAM. The 6500 XT sounds dead in the water, doesn't it? But you know what I'm going to say. It all comes down to pricing and availability. If past releases are anything to go by, these cards will be snapped up and then resold on eBay for double the asking price. But the Radeon 6500 XT has a secret weapon. It's so bad, it might possibly be good. Its 4GB of VRAM could make it unappealing for mining. It also makes it unappealing for gaming, but it might remain available. And let's not forget how capable these cards still are for gaming. Yes, they're not exactly going to run like a GeForce 3080 or Radeon 6800 XT will, but it's easy to forget how ridiculously overpowered the high-end cards currently are, and how they're designed to run at much higher resolutions than you honestly need if you're simply looking to be able to play some games. And if we approach this from the other extreme, these new graphics cards look a lot better they're still well beyond what you find in Valve's Steam Deck, which itself is still powerful enough to run every game they've tested on Steam. Compared with that, the 6500 XT has double the compute units and will be clocked higher. So these cards are still well beyond the latest APUs, which themselves are being marketed as being gaming capable in laptops and stuff like that. And even with those, it's only in the latest and most demanding titles that you'll start to struggle. We're talking maybe a dozen or so games here. Literally any other game ever made should run quite easily on these things. I suppose you've got to try and gain some perspective here by looking at the games you're trying to run, and you might be surprised to find that Valorant, PUBG and Age of Empires 2 will still run quite well even when on modest hardware. A year ago I made a video speculating about a $200 graphics card hero, one that supported ray tracing and upscaling. I argued that it wouldn't need to be very fast, it simply needed to exist. Fast forward to today and I think this remains truer than ever, and the Radeon 6500 XT and GeForce 3050 are the first cards that I think have been designed with this in mind. We've just got to hope that they aren't suitable for mining. Nvidia is resurrecting the GeForce 2060 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, which might be to give miners a more desirable option than the 3050. And AMD is being really miserly with their 4 gigabytes of VRAM, which again, I hope will in some way disincentivize mining. And maybe things will change once Ethereum changes over to block based well, blah, 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 later this year. But for now, it's the worst time we've ever had to buy a graphics card. We get less stuff and it costs more money. But even knowing this and stating it constantly on every video about graphics cards isn't going to help you if you currently don't have a graphics card or if you just want to get on with some gaming without spending a small fortune. So if you're desperate for a graphics card and are wary about spending $300 on a secondhand graphics on eBay, then these new cards might indeed be the graphics card heroes that you've been waiting for. And once you get them, never give them up. For we need to keep these beauties out of the hands of miners. We must remain one step ahead of them using these chips only for good. They're not the cards that we deserve, but could be the cards that we need right now. A silent card, a watchful renderer, a bit sharp.